Welcome to another FPL video. This will be the best wildcard team for Gameweek 18, but I wouldn't recommend using the chip just yet. This will also provide you an idea of transfers to make, especially including some players like Reese James. Who do you replace him with? This video will help you with that and provide some transfer tips. So if you end up enjoying it or finding it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for you. We're trying to reach new goals, such as 20,000 subscribers, and trying to get this video to over 200 likes. It'd be very much appreciated, but let's get straight into this video and leave your comments in the comment section down below. I think there's a pool of goalkeepers you could go to, but I would stick with Kepa Rizabalaga, just as I talked about in the unlimited transfers. He got a nine-pointer in Game Week 17 against Bournemouth with four saves, two bonus points, and also a clean sheet on top of that. And I think he's the best way of covering Chelsea defensively, especially with the injury to Reese James. And it looks like he's going to be out for some time yet again with an injury to the same location, the same problem he had before the World Cup. Now, a few other goalkeepers you could consider as your main one, apart from Kepa Rizabalaga, would include Ram. Ramsdale, Jose Sarr, David De Gea, and I would even include a few others like Nick Pope in the mix. I wouldn't try to put too many names in the basket, but I think Kepa is the standout. He's quite cheap, and Chelsea have a double game week in 19, and also some great fixtures before and afterwards, including Nottingham Forest in game week 18. I don't think Chelsea are that great defensively, and I don't expect a clean sheet, actually, in game week 19, despite having a double, but I still think Kepa is a really good way of covering their defense, and he can still get some save points and maybe get a three or four pointer even if Chelsea concede a goal or two and I think Nick Pope is one of the most reliable Newcastle have a very solid defense but you could also go for a double up in the defense with Botman and Trippier as well so I'm going to go for something a bit different here go for Kepa Ward is still the backup despite losing 3-0 to Newcastle I still think he's worth the money and he's a good backup to be fair and you don't have any other goalkeeper around that price that can offer that certainty of starts like Ward does a very common question during the reaction stream was who do I replace Rhys James with? And I put a list of three or four names, including Botman, Ben White, Cucurella and Robertson. And upon reflection, I would go for Robertson over Cucurella. And I'm not that big of a fan of Liverpool defensively. I think they should have conceded more goals to Aston Villa. Robertson is very expensive as well. But with the assist potential, the bonus points, and I think Liverpool will get better over time. Keep some clean sheets mainly at home, but in the away fixtures, and they have plenty of them coming up, I'd be less certain and I compare that to Cucurella and I don't see a clean sheet for Chelsea personally in the double game week against Fulham or Manchester City and you also look at Cucurella and he's a short-term punt you've already got Kepper in goal and I've said this many times I don't have enough confidence in Chelsea defensively to go for a double up even if it included Reese James and Kepper I'd still be very hesitant about that and beyond the double game week I will try to get rid of a Reese James or another Chelsea defender whoever it may be and in this case it would be Mark Cucurella Ben Chilwell is back in training according to reports so that's another kind of red flag for me with Cucurella and I just don't think he's living up to the hype I know Cucurella has some attacking potential and he can be a decent pun even you could say for the next five to ten game weeks but I would rather go for this kind of structure and I think Newcastle and Arsenal apart from Manchester City of course have the best defenses in the league so I would go for Ben White I know he didn't keep the clean sheet against West Ham but apart from the penalty West Ham didn't create too much to be fair and Ben White is very good value for money if you have a Saliba for example and have a lot of value tied up in him then you can just keep him to be fair and he'll do the job for you as well then you look at the rest of the defense I've got a double up in Newcastle with Trippier and Botman and I think Botman is the very best at 4.4 million and below you look at Bueno Patterson and a few others around that price threshold and I just don't think they'll offer as many points or consistency as Botman who you could mainly bench but sometimes to go a bit different you can double up on Newcastle defensively and whenever you need him Botman can come off the bench and do a job for you like he did in Gimmick 17 when he got the clean sheet against Leicester. Then we've got Andrew Robertson himself. Like I said, I think the attacking potential, the bonus points is definitely there for him. And you can also consider Trent, of course. He's a great player and a fantastic playmaker. But I would probably go for Robertson out of the two. And Robertson's ownership is around 5%. That's very appealing to me. And also with Joao Cancelo, he is the kind of the big omission of this list. He was on the bench against Leeds, which was very surprising. Of course, we reacted to this in the reaction stream but I still think Cancelo will reclaim his place but it might take a little bit of a while and for a defender that's over 7 million to not 
be a guaranteed starter at this moment in time. I think that's enough to possibly sell him in this week or in the weeks to come. But I'm personally going to wait first. And if he's benched again against Everton in game week 18, that's where I would consider switch to a Robertson or go elsewhere in terms of my own team selection. You can check out my team selection video, which I uploaded recently. And the final two defenders include Luke Shaw, who played as a centre-back actually against Nottingham Forest. But I would expect him to go back to his normal left-back position and that's where he can get some more joy. But even then, he got two bonus points and got an eight-pointer overall. So you can't complain too much there. And I think Shaw or Diogo Dallo is the best way to cover United defensively. If I had a personal preference, it would be Dallo, but I have to wait first until he's fully fit and recovered. And once he's getting that game time and he secures that right back spot once again, that's where I would probably go for him. For the time being, it's probably Luke Shaw. He's the safer pick. And the final defender's trip here, we don't need to speak about him too much. He's literally comparable in terms of Haaland when you're looking at FPL points. I think there's only a 20 or 30 point difference between the two, despite how good Haaland has been with 20 goals in 14 games. It just goes to show how consistent Trippi has been. Only three blanks, I believe, this season, and he's just a bonus points machine. Newcastle keeping so many clean sheets, and there's no reason for you to not go for Trippier at this point in time. The midfield is stacked, which is why I personally went for a midfield five, so to speak, in my own team selection using unlimited transfers in gimmick 17. But I would probably reconsider and go to a midfield four with Andres Pereira being on your bench and you can sometimes bring him on, such as in game week 19 when Fulham have the double. So I've got Martinelli in here right now and there is this big debate with Arsenal midfielders. They've all scored a similar amount of points. I believe Martinelli and Saka have scored the exact same with 85 and you've got Odegaard leading the pack with 88 and he has been the main man, especially in the last two games for Arsenal with a couple of assists against West Ham and also a brace against Wolves just before the break. But I I still think Martinelli will score more goals than him and also get more points but you could go for either one of them I've got a lot of value tied up in Martinelli so I would recommend him personally but you could go for any one of those three Arsenal midfielders with his team structure though and the funds for most people watching this video I would recommend going for Odegaard or Martinelli and my preference is still with the Brazilian looking to the other midfielders and Dres Pereira for me is the best budget midfielder you've also got Greenwood up front if you decide to go for a midfield five and go for two up front with a budget striker. Greenwood got an assist against Manchester City and almost picked up a second one. Gellhart was literally just inches away from getting a second goal for Leeds United to make it a very turbulent ending there for Manchester City. So he's not a bad option either. But from midfielders around 4.7 million below Andres is definitely the standout. He's got the double. I wouldn't overcomplicate that situation at all. And things start to get really interesting with the rest of the midfield. I've gone for Salah over De Bruyne and this question was heavily asked over the last week and I still think it's very close between him and De Bruyne and on another day I think De Bruyne gets a double digit return against Leeds United. The passing was absolutely sensational. Haaland missed a couple of chances even up to three or four you could argue and on another day Haaland could have scored five to be fair and De Bruyne's passing I have to say the playmaking the spaces he was opening up and the swerve passes. I mean, they're absolutely outstanding and he deserved much more than he got a two-pointer. It really should have been much more, to be honest. And Salah got that 12-pointer against Aston Villa, missed a crucial chance, but still scored and assisted. And despite all of that, I still think it's very close. You can't judge it based off one game week and City will still score more goals and also win more games than Liverpool up until the end of the season. But at the same time, I would still edge it towards Salah. He's on penalties, he's more nailed on, fewer games because Manchester City are still in the Carabao Cup and I think City will have more rotation including De Bruyne as we saw the other day or should I say yesterday at this point you've got Foden, Cancelo and Walker all being dropped out to the bench no one expected that to happen and that's what can happen at any point with Pep Guardiola and Manchester City so I would just play it safe and go for Salah He's also got slightly lower ownership, and I think that's another advantage. I know the ownership is quite comparable, both of them over 30%, but Sal is still more of a differential when you compare the two. And he's also a great captaincy option. You wouldn't want to captain De Bruyne over Haaland on most occasions, but with Salah, especially when he has a better fixture, I think he'd be a bit more inclined to do that. So I would personally favour Salah, and I prefer that than having, for example, De Bruyne midfield and Nunez up front. Then looking at the other two midfielders, Rashford delivered a 14-pointer 
against Nottingham Forest. A great finish for the first goal. Poor defending by Forest, but nonetheless, a fantastically worked goal by Ericsson and Rashford. And it was a really good set piece. And Rashford is one of the very best options of that price and below, with the exception, you could say, of Odegaard and Martinelli. But I think Rashford has the fixtures. He's got the form and a potential double very soon to just make him an even better FPL option. The final midfielder is Almiron, who's been one of the very best players in the Premier League this season. I know Newcastle don't have a double, but I would still go for two or three players. Trippi and Almiron for me are non-negotiable. Then you could go for a Nick Pope in goal or Botman in the defence. It's completely up to you. I would avoid the forwards like Callum Wilson, who was ill once again, and he's injury prone. Also, Isak and all these other forwards. I just wouldn't go for them. Even say Maximan. I would keep it very simple. Go for those two that I said, Trippi and Almiron, and then maybe add a third Newcastle player if you are really confident about them. There are still a lot of good forwards in the game, especially at a cheap price. Apart from Mitrovic, you've got Inketia, Martial, and you can still add a few other names to the mix. But I would go for Mitrovic. My only concern with this forward line is that you've got two forwards here in Kane and Mitrovic, who are one yellow card away from suspension. And you've also got Ivan Tony, by the way, who's another one that has no yellow card risk in terms of suspensions, but he's got the betting rules breach uh, that could still really affect him. And we should find out more within January. I'm not sure exactly what the date is, but within the next month, we should have more clarification on when the ban will be and whether he'll get one, which, to be honest, I'd be very surprised if he didn't at this point but I would go for Harry Kane he is so reliable another return there against Brentford and his record is insane in the Premier League we all know this he scored against every single opposition now that he's faced 32 teams and he's also never blanked on Boxing Day of course that's already gone by I've got him in my own team I'm very happy to have him and he's also another one that you could also consider for the captaincy so this is a freemium draft you've got more options apart from Haaland to captain a very reliable and consistent player like a Salah or a Harry Kane on certain occasions especially in a game week like I think 19 when Manchester City faced Chelsea that's where you could perhaps go a bit different and go for Kane against Palace or maybe go for Salah instead the other forwards include Mitrovic who got a 15 pointer Marco Silva trolled us all and that's another one to look out for in terms of press conferences don't trust Marco Silva and everything he says Having said that, if you're not willing to take the risk of a yellow card suspension, and especially two of these players up front, then maybe go for a Tony, a Enketia, or Martial instead of Mitrovic. But I would try to limit it to that pool of players, even the likes of Callum Wilson, who I think is a great striker. I wouldn't trust him in FPL. He's never had that consistent run at Newcastle, staying fit, not getting illnesses, and just constantly playing games for Newcastle. If he did, then I would consider him. But when you've already got Alm run, and in this case, you've got a triple up in Newcastle already, I don't see the need to go for Wilson but I would go for Mitrovic I think he can score a bucket load of goals against Southampton you just have to hope that he doesn't get that fifth yellow card to then be suspended for the following game week and Erling Haaland speaks for himself he scored two goals against Leeds it should have been three or four he knows it he's still going to be firing goals every single game it looks like and he's got 20 goals in 14 games so far this season he could easily reach 40 goals or more which is unprecedented in the Premier League he's just a natural goal scorer and with all the creativity around him with Grealish, De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, you name it. He's just going to score goals and it's inevitable at this point. So that's the forward line. It's a really solid team overall as well, in my opinion. I know some of you might be a bit reluctant about this because we don't have that many Chelsea players and they've got a double very soon. So you might question, where's Mason Mount? Where is, for example, Mark Cucurella? I was about to say Reese James there. Well, you can't cover absolutely everybody and you could still go for someone like Mason Mount, but it would require a downgrade elsewhere. And I don't think it's worth it. If you had to you know, really find a way for Mason Mount and you really want him, then what I would do is downgrade someone like Robertson, maybe go for a Cucurella, and then also add a third Chelsea player there in Mason Mount and add him to your midfield ranks. But would I replace Martinelli, Salah, Rashford or Almiron for Mason Mount? I'll be honest, I wouldn't do that, even for the double game it coming up. Let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to over 300 likes. And let's also push on towards 20,000 subscribers. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM. And you can also become a patron or channel member. The links are in the description below. The same goes to the Discord server and the FPL League. So all of that is there. I wish you all the best of luck for the rest of the FPL season. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I'll see you next time.